Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. <laughs> We're good. We live? Yeah, with Nick Matea. Oh, and hell yeah. I, I love your last name, by the way. I appreciate it. I'm a fan. It used to be Mateovich. Oh, really? When we came here. Hey, talk a little bit more into it, right? And you also you want to talk to like the top of it, right? The top here. of it. Yeah. You hear me better now? Yeah, absolutely. Right on. Well, yeah, so it used to be Mateovic, and then we cut off the Vich when we came to uh America from Croatia or whatever. Yeah, no Croatia. way. Yeah. Wait, are you first generation? No, no, or... no, no. This is like my great great grandpa or something. Okay, something absolutely. Like absolutely. But yeah, that'd have been cool. That sounds like a soccer player for real. Mateovic. Mateovic. Oh yeah. That does, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know on like the Croatian soccer team, like their entire names like sound like Rakitic. Oh, yeah. What's another one? Um, I cannot think of his name right now. Mandzukic. Yeah, those are some of the Modric. Like the, <laughs> it's all icy. Right, right. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, can, I like Mateo more. Yeah, for Good, sure. Good uh, shout out to your great great grandpa. Yeah, man. <laughs> Whatever happened to him? I don't know. I don't know too much about that. Dude, isn't that weird? Like that. Actually, that's like a big reason why I started this podcast because I was like, dude, okay, like when you're thinking about your great grandparent or like, I don't know, it probably some, everybody has like a max out limit. Like they might remember their great grandparent, but like nobody's really remembering like their great great yeah, grandparent yeah, for sure. So I like I kind of took like the initiative. I'm like, dude, my grandparents are dope. Let's like kind of pre- preserve their legacy. And like I started this podcast just doing it with my grandpa fucking around, like just really? put a camera on. I was like, dude, I've always enjoyed our conversations. That's like, the might thing as is well. that, like, grandparents, they have great stories, too. You just got to sit there and listen. Like, you ever do, like, service at a retirement home or anything? No. Dude, I had to do that for, like, some high school service project or something, and they got some stories. Really? Especially the ones that, like, been to war and all that. Oh, I bet. It's crazy. But, yeah. That, like, what what does make sense to me is, like, young people don't listen. Like, that's, <laughs> yeah. like I, I don't know. That's always made sense to me is, like, just listen to them because they have lived so much longer than you and they're i don't know like right just you're, have just, way more experience. you're arrogant when you're young i mean shit i still am you know same, with, with a lot of things also i think it's kind of like an instant gratification type thing they want shit now okay and that's like a lot of things you know like that's like just modern technology and whatnot mm-hmm. like fast food porn social media all that it's like you're instantly rewarded okay versus like if you would like take the time to like learn lessons you know yeah, because you got to sit there and listen longer. at yeah, that point. Yeah, exactly. People's attention spans, too. Even mine is like 30 seconds, and then I'm kind of just thinking about other shit. I feel that 100%. ADD or whatever. Overly diagnosed, too. That's what I'm saying. I got prescribed when I was like third grade. Oh, no way. But, dude, what I don't understand is why are you going to give someone with like ADHD, like hyperactive, like someone who has way too much energy, a stimulant? And, like, expect them to just, like, chill out, you know? It's never made sense to me. Yeah. It's supposed to, like, normalize you, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, I think the big thing is just so that you can pay attention longer. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Like, I mean, it, and it definitely works for that. But, dude, I just – makes my heart feel weird. And Same. I just, like, to get the jitters, you know? It's like you're just always really nervous, but, like, there's nothing to be nervous about. Exactly. You know? Which is crazy. Do you still take it? So, I mean, I'll take it. If I have like some big test or something, or just like I'm cramming for something, but I don't like to. That's I'm, everything you just said. Same. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just if I really need to get a lot of shit done really quick, I will. But other than that, I don't really need it. You know, I can like, like if I just like buckle down and like force myself to pay attention, mm-hmm. I can do it. But it's just having the willpower to do that you know absolutely which is something you get better at with age oh yeah oh 100 percent. i've gone i've been leaps and bounds since like even freshman year mm-hmm. like i pretty much skated through high school and all that and uh so i was on it in third grade right and that is so young by the way that is like <laughs> so, that's nine years old that's well, you, you nine think years should, you old think there should be an age that they start prescribing i don't know i don't yeah, know right. like what's the ethical like right because when's like, the right time when's not technically like i don't know i feel like the argument is that People will get behind, like kids will get behind if you don't start taking it young. Uh-huh. But like, I think it'll fuck kids up too if you take it too young. I don't know. I'm waiting on like like the brain scans of like guys have taken it their whole life, you know, and see what happens. Cause I don't know. I just feel like it can't be good. Yeah. Like, right. I don't know. There's no like really like support behind that, but like I just just feel it in my gut, you know. There's like this uh, like 50 year old dude. His name's Henry Rollins. 
uh, he was he was in the band Black Fat. Oh yeah, Black, no, 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 Black I, know, I know who that is. Yeah. Okay, absolutely, absolutely. And he was like one of the first people to ever take Ritalin. And that's it, what I, yeah, have you ever listened like a podcast with him? No. He's like a jittery dude. Like oh, he, yeah. he's really interesting. He's like very interesting guy. But he's like very uh, like all over the place kind of. Right. And is I've, he, I've always on, wondered. Is he on it now? Do what? Is he on it now? That I don't know. That I don't okay. know. But I, I know like it's gotta mess with your like neurochemistry like at a young age. It's meth. If you look at the if you look at the like the chemical. Yeah, it's like one methyl it. group yeah, away. Dude, exactly. That's crazy. That's what I'm saying. Like the fact that that's just legal and the whole opioids thing and all that. Like it's a, but it's okay to take because a doctor gave it to you. You know. Mm-hmm. So like that's fine. Like there's people that quit heroin to take oxycotton. You know. There was something ridiculous about. I don't know if it's oxycotton or Percocet. There was one of them. First of all. If you haven't seen Prescription Thugs on Netflix, you Never need to seen watch it. that. Prescription Thugs? Prescription Thugs. It's just the whole, it's pretty much like a, just thing about all how prescription drugs and like the ad- epidemic with people in America getting addicted to it. Like uh-huh. there was some stupid statistic like uh, in America, we prescribe enough prescription painkillers to like medicate everyone in America, like every single person around the clock for like five months. Like we do that a year. So it's like, What's going on with that? And there is another thing. It was like, as soon that's as... That's a crazy stat. Right. Like, that's ridiculous. Also, they said something about 80% or whenever they, like, change the formula of the Oxycontin pill uh-huh. to uh, one that you can't, like, crush up or you can't, like, somehow turn it into, like, heroin, you know, so you can inject it. Okay. It lost, like, 80% of its, um, just, like, value or um, I don't even know what it is. Just, just the like people Maybe buying like it or, or yeah, 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 something like that. But that's crazy. Eighty percent. That's crazy. Just, just because you can't inject it anymore. It's like because they, they, that's clearly they're buying it for this right. other purpose. Yeah, that's insane, dude. That means eighty percent of the people <laughs> are like are doing that shit, you know. So, so is that usually how it works? Like, do people start like okay? So, say you get into heroin and you're like addicted to heroin. Do you usually get yourself off by? like taking like oxycontin or do you work your way the opposite way like do you start taking like a pain pill uh maybe like like xanax then go to oxycontin and then go to i mean i don't know what like the latter would be yeah. and then go to heroin because i've heard people turning to heroin because it's cheaper and it's right, an opiate right. yeah well i mean so i know a couple guys actually unfortunately that like have got into heroin but mm-hmm. it was because like they hurt their broke their leg or something and then they prescribe their prescribed pain pills or like oxycontin or whatever and um they pretty much just start taking those because so my boy actually this is last weekend he got his nose broken uh by my other friend which is a different story but he they prescribed him oxycontin and they like he didn't really have anything wrong like they just set his nose and then he was fine like it obviously hurt a little bit but they gave him a prescription for like 50 or 60 oxycontin like dude what do you need that much for yeah you know? right like i don't know i just i just think that's ridiculous too just the amount the amount that they give you at a time and same with my riddle and whenever I was they stopped actually but sophomore year of college I was getting 200 I was supposed to take three a day because they're technically four hour but uh-huh. they're definitely a lot more than four hour but they were giving me 270 pills um every three months of, of Ritalin yeah 270 pills three what, what is so that even? It's, it's supposed to be three a day but I don't Wait, know what, what milligram is this 20 but like, so it doesn't work like 20 milligrams of Adderall isn't the same as 20 milligrams of Vyvanse and Ritalin and Concerta. It's all different chemicals, but okay. like 20 is like the highest dose pill Ritalin makes. So it's like, is Ritalin like not as severe as Adderall or not as strong? Honestly, it's so Ritalin and Concerta are like the same chemical, okay. but Concerta is like usually extended release and Ritalin is the instant release. So like four hour versus 12 hour. Okay. Absolutely. But I mean, they they kind of do the same thing. You definitely feel different on all of them. That's for sure. Not that I do that, but <laughs> no. My, my um, roommate he got prescribed Vyvanse, and then he switched over to Adderall, and yeah. he said Vyvanse feels more like clean. Like that's the way he described it was clean. Yeah, it's different. It's expensive too. Like shit. My like uh, my Ritalin. It's like now now I get ninety pills every month, which is the same amount really. Uh huh. But um, it's like nine, seven dollars I think. For 90 pills. But my brother was at, he has Vyvanse, right? And that's like $60. Uh huh. Which is crazy for a month's supply, you know? That's crazy. Yeah. 
I don't know. So is that is that documentary kind of like an attack on like big pharma? Yeah, pretty much. It's like it's crazy how much money they make too. Yeah, like it's unreal. And that's the thing is that like, it's pretty much a monopoly because you can charge whatever you want because people are gonna pay it no matter what. Uh huh. Like you need certain medications. Yeah. I'm curious if there are any like natural alternatives. I'm sure. Like I'm something sure. like energy wise that's gonna help you focus because I've never found like an energy drink that. It kind of helps me focus, but not, like, on the level of Adderall. Like, Adderall, you are zoned the fuck right. in. There's something, too, out in, like, Silicon Valley and whatnot. People microdosing psilocybin, like the mushrooms. True. To, and they say it's, like, creative Adderall, which, that's crazy. I mean. Creative you, Adderall. Yeah, they say it's, like, Adderall. Like, they're really focused. But, uh-huh. like, it's not, like, I don't know. Whenever I'm on Adderall, I feel like I'm not as, like, creative. I'm, more, I'm really good at, like, grinding through shit. Okay, yeah, I would agree like, with that. Like, I, I can memorize shit really quick, uh-huh. but it's not like I'm thinking of new ideas and whatnot, you know? I'm kind of just doing the old thing. I, I come up with some new ideas, honestly, as well. Oh, I would say both, yeah. Really? I, I'm definitely zoned in, but, yeah. yeah, I would definitely, like, if I put it, I don't do this all the time. I usually put it towards, like, honestly, how I like to use Adderall is, is doing shit I don't like doing unless I'm taking <laughs> Adderall, yeah. which is 100%. such a weird effect. Like, how does a drug make you like something you don't like doing? Well, it, like, just that's stimulates so your, your dopamine, right, your dopamine receptors, and that's it's kind of like a stimulant, uh-huh. and it also just makes you feel good. So it's like, that's one thing I've noticed on, like, Adderall benders, like, if I have finals week or something, the next couple of days, man, I feel like shit. Really? I, yeah, like almost like a depression type thing. It's like coming down I mean, from something major. You deplete all your shit, and you're just yeah. stimulating the fuck out of your receptors. And then after that, you're just like not having it. Your body's like, all right, well, we have all this. We don't need to keep making it until a couple days later. And then you. That, that's funny you said it too, because I, I forget the original point I, why I brought that up. But what you were saying earlier with uh, like how it alters your neurochemistry. Yeah. Like I'm a very like I, I really, I'm very like high in conscientiousness, meaning like I really like to like be working on something. Right. And I always wonder, am I, am I wired that way? Because Adderall, like, pers- like it kind of like manipulated my neurochemistry when I was growing up and taking this on like a consistent basis. Because yeah. it does play along like your dopaminic oh, like reward system. How young were so you? So much. How young were you when you prescribed? Uh, freshman year in high school. Okay. Yeah. Well. One one thing that I found is interesting. So my boy went in, who was our age, last year. So it'd be a senior, or he'd be a junior okay. in college, and he got he tried to get prescribed Adderall, and they they prescribed him to meditate and like work on being able to control his thoughts before they actually gave it to him. So they were like, "Hey, come back in like a couple months." I've never heard of and that. Tell before. me what you think. And if you think about it like that, like the just the practice of meditation, basically you'll just focus on your breath or just something for as long as you can and just being like observant of your thoughts but not getting distracted by them Mm -hmm. and i mean if you think about it that's just like i guess training your attention span that's crazy yeah that's crazy i know and it's crazy that they actually i wouldn't think that they would prescribe that like i could definitely see how it would work but like i don't know Especially here in Missouri, you think that's like, <laughs> like over in Cali, they're yeah, like, "Hey, just saying. just meditate more. You right, don't need the right. Adderall." No, that's really cool though. That's really that's cool. What they should start doing for meditation, much. man. Is one of those things like I want to get into, and I have this like paradigm that I'm living with. I'm like, how my life's gonna go is I'm gonna live, I'm gonna be like going throughout my daily life, and then I'm gonna be walking down the street, and I'm gonna meet some hippie guru, and they're gonna come and be like, "Come with me, meditate," and like, but like I don't, I've never. I don't want to say never. I did it for like a month, but like I've never like just really taken the time to like seek the benefits of it. And yeah. a lot of people that that do it and like really are like big advocates of meditation, they say you got to stick with it oh, like yeah. for a well, while. It goes to the whole thing with that instant gratification thing we were talking about earlier. Like the effects of like that. Like think about like a like a monk who's been doing it for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like they can control. I don't know who it was, Gandhi or Buddha or somebody. One of them used to have like naked Indian women like sleep like next to them at night to train their like self-control you know and just like just to be the ability to have all that like that's so important if you that's can do crazy. that crazy yeah but like that and that's the thing is that like realistically most like americans nowadays we don't have a lot of self-control and i don't know i think that's definitely something we can help like if you look at like something i'm lacking I'm like, for sure, <laughs> oh, for sure. especially in college oh yeah i think things are going to change though hopefully when we uh graduate and whatnot we do have a lot of distractions in our defense no excuses. I mean, I guess it's, it definitely is an excuse. But, like, we have a lot of distractions down here. There's always something going on. There's always yeah something to do. You, yeah, just constantly. 
that's where the peer pressure comes in. And I feel like that's just why a fuck ton of people fail out freshman year. Because yeah. they can't handle that. You got to be able to get your shit done and still go out, you know, still have fun. But a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people I struggle fail with that out freshman a lot. year. Yeah. But I don't know. I think as you grow, as you grow older, you get better at that. Yeah, I'd agree. Just not being influenced by other people as much. And if you if you can make it, then your your self control is arguably better because it's like I've seen the distractions and I've like been able I've gotten better at saying no to like doing fun stuff. Yeah. It's like now nah, I gotta study. Yeah, exactly. You're like you're on your own time. It's like no, like I I put it off last night and like I know you're asking me to do this really fun thing in the moment right now, but like I can't. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't always do that, but <laughs> I've gotten better at. It. Just going from living moment to moment to just slowly trying to figure it out. And yeah. Think long term. We got this hedonistic lifestyle going on right now. So, very hedonistic. Yeah. Very. <laughs> well, that's Wednesday, college in one basically word. Basically, Wednesday through Saturday is like that. Uh huh. And then Sunday through Wednesday afternoon. Uh huh. I get I get my shit done through then, but yeah. Well, and that's just right now, you know. We, shit, we only got three more weeks of this. Yeah. Well, I got oh, a semester. Got, yeah, got a, I got a semester and summer, right. but yeah, yeah. That's right. Who knows? I might start over at Mizzou. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I mean, as much as I would like for that to happen, I'm kind of uh-huh. ready to start doing other shit, you uh-huh. know, cause you, you get done with like a four day bender, you know, and you just kind of feel like shit. Yeah. Like true. you don't feel like you got anything done cause you didn't get anything done. Yeah. Right, yeah. Like you're slowly killing yourself for having some temporary fun, you know? Absolutely. But Hey, it's that one thing I was thinking of and you, I thought of this because I saw you at boogie one night and you weren't uh-huh. drinking at all. And that blew my mind. First of all, uh-huh. that someone could go out without drinking. That was st- a, that was a first, by the way. Not only that do was that, a first. but still have fun. You know, I dude, I had a great night. Exactly. I had a great night. Teach me your secrets. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it was really in the moment. I will say, it was really in the moment. I'm like, I don't feel like finding a ride tonight. Like, I don't even really like feel like drinking either. Right. So I just, I drove downtown, went in, and uh, ran into you, and actually ran into that other girl who like told me you can that girl I was talking about before the podcast that traveled oh, yeah, on yeah. 5k for two months yeah and i was like i was like that those two people are why i came here I was like, <laughs> that's why i came here tonight that's awesome though man but yeah like just to be able to do that i think that'd be awesome but the problem is i've done that and like even when i don't drink that much and i go out mm-hmm. i just get so annoyed no with same. everyone else yeah <laughs> just a bunch of drunk fucks running around spilling shit you know I feel like everybody, like, the party lifestyle right now and, like, just hedonism in general, yeah, oh, a yeah. lot of people, whenever you get so much of it, like, you you, you love it at first and then you, you start to develop a love-hate relationship with it. It's, like, it's still fun now, but it's not, like, like, there are definitely a lot of cons and, like, you start to notice more of the cons. Yeah. And that's just growing up. That's just, yeah. yeah. Well, it's definitely not as fun as fresh. Well, I don't know about that, but, like, freshman year, that mm-hmm. was the time where you just you just don't got to worry about anything. You know, your biggest concern is if your dick's going to work that night. You yeah. Know? Right. Right. That type of thing. If you're going to, like if you're going to get like MIP and arrested, any of uh, that, you know, so. if your dick's going to work that night, <laughs> well, that's the thing, man. And that's a good life. Honestly, there's yeah, kids starving yeah. in Africa and that's our biggest concern. You yeah. Know? Right. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> I don't know if that's hilarious or we just sound like fucking ignorant assholes. Right well, now. No. I mean, realistically, <laughs> that's what it was. Yeah, MIP was always a big concern for me. Did you ever get one? No, never did. Luckily. Wow. Did you? No. I don't oh yeah, know. look at us, man. <laughs> Fuck yeah. You have any close calls? No, nothing I can remember. Really? Nothing like super close. Dude, we were at a cedar party one time. Uh huh. And basically, it got busted. There was like a fucking probably like twenty cops who came uh-huh. in and they breathalyzed. It was on dead day and they breathalyzed. Or they gave everybody the eye test, and they gave out. They ended up giving out like eighty MIPs that night. I've heard about that. Yeah. I've heard about that night. Did so, they just lock you in the house? Like, yeah. did they just lock? Oh, well, they surrounded wow. it. Uh-huh. And, like at the back, there's this little trap door, and you can go down, and like go out the back. And there's two cops right there. Forget who it was. Somebody went and just got laid out. Somebody just got leveled trying to run away. Really? Because there was like twenty cops. Yeah, it was a lot. Wow. If you could, like, get, like, a do-over, it'd be fun to try to run out of that house. You know what I mean? Like, if, if there were, like, no big, like, consequences, just try to run. Just to see if to you see if you it. can make it, yeah. 
Assuming they don't tase you, too. Well, that's the do-over. That's the do-over element, right. too. They can only tackle. Like, that'd be kind of fucking fun. You ever been tased before? No. Really? No. Have you? Yeah, a couple times. Just like... Wait, like a gun taser? No, or? no. See, okay. it's only of the, like the uh, stick one, you know? Okay, and absolutely. It's like, that doesn't re- that's not really that bad. It's like a little bit worse than like those pens, you know, that shock you. you yeah, yeah, them. absolutely. It's like a little bit more than that. But, yeah, no, that's not as bad. The one, the stun gun, the one that shoots into you, uh-huh. I've never done that, but I'm sure that's awful. I've heard, like, the most pain, or not most, but, like, a big part of the pain is, like, whenever you have to rip it out. Because you can't just get it out. You can't. Yeah. Oh, it goes into you, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like, a, like, I'm, my understanding of it, at least, is that you can't just, like, kind of, like, fish hook it out. Like, yeah. you have to fucking rip that chunk of skin out. Ugh. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's not as bad. I think that one of the worst is getting pepper sprayed too. Uh huh. I think that's like the, I got pepper sprayed two times. I've heard that's awful. Every time, dude, it's an. You've been olive. tased and pepper sprayed. Yeah. Okay. It's just <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not some type of delinquent right uh, now, right? This is just like me drunk with. with you're just with experimental. My yeah. You're like, oh, hey, well, okay. how, how bad is that really? You know? Uh huh. Like I've seen people get maced before. And well, no, the first time actually it was like some like, dude, I oh. love that open mindedness, by the way. I love it. Cause not many people are like that way, you know, like, just see I, how it goes. yeah, no, that's, that's dumb. Are you, are you it's, sure? it's stupidly open minded. Right. We're not advocating getting mace too, on this podcast, <laughs> but yeah, the first time it was like this, like pink sparkly, like case. So I was like, Oh, well, how bad could that be? You know, it looks so inviting. Right. And then. I got it. And the first time, I didn't know that if you like, because it, it's like a solid hour of just excruciating pain. It's like Buffalo Wild Wings blazing sauce just all over you. But like. What, it hurts more than just your eyes? Okay, well, well, yeah, it hurts everywhere. Dude, it gets in your mouth. You start to breathe it in your nose. Oh. And I didn't know that if you stood in the shower straight up, it just washes down you. And then it just burns everything as it goes down. Oh, shit. Yeah. So that was the first time that happened. And yeah. the first time that was, yeah. So was you tried it another time. Well, yeah. Cause I was like, all right, well, this is like, well, this is like <laughs> sophomore year. No, this is last year. actually. <laughs> I don't want to admit that, but yes, this is last. So year. this is like four years ago. I, fuck man. It's yeah. like, this is last I weekend. Actually. I can't lie. This, this is yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> but I got smarter on this time. Okay. I, I laid in the shower and let it go like straight down my face like this. Okay. And <laughs> that worked, dude. It was gone in like 40 minutes. Really? Yeah. Wow. I got like fifty bucks for it too. It was great. That's a I it, money money would probably change my mind. <laughs> just to do it, I don't know. Just maybe for the first time, I maybe yeah. did. Uh, there might have been money involved in the first time. I don't remember though. I think there probably was. That's the incentive. Money's incentive. the motivator, man. People do some crazy shit for some money. True. Whole lot of it. There's like very few things that you're like, well, do this, and I'm like, absolutely not. And you're like, dude, like. 40 bucks it's like <laughs> all right all right that's the thing you can make that happen so easy too it's like everybody throwing five <laughs> everybody throwing five we're gonna mace this fella yeah that's what we're gonna do you ever you ever done anything dumb like that for money oh, i can't think of anything off the top of my head yeah i've done some stupid shit for sure but I, <laughs> nothing that comes to mind like getting maced or anything right no well i was about to i almost got caught up in this uh so this guy worked for where worked with Joe. We were like unload trucks and pretty much like build office cubicles and whatnot. Yeah, very and cool. he was trying to get me and a couple other people that worked there to do this like you basically go on dates with older women and you get paid like five hundred bucks an hour. Or no like way. it wouldn't be an hour, I guess it would be for like the four hour date. Really? And first of all, that's I was I was intrigued. And I thought that, that I'm was intrigued. Good, yeah. Give me this guy's number. Holy and shit! And that's the thing is that's 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 it's not like a like a prostitution thing. It's literally just a date. Yeah, but the thing is, is that like okay, you put you put yourself in the shoes of an older mar- or I guess divorced woman uh-huh. probably, and for five hundred bucks, what are you expecting? You know, you don't think you're just getting a date, and that's the thing. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. I didn't oh, even think yeah. about that. I was just, th- I'm like, go well, out I mean, to dinner with some older lady. Go out to my dinner with my mom's friend. <laughs> just like kick it with her. Just keep her company. Light the candle. D- I don't know, like pay with some of that 500 and uh, you're good to go. Well, how many of that you think is out there though? How many girls, how many women like that you think really would pay for $500 for some company? They got to be lonely for sure. That's without a doubt. They got to be seeking some weird validation. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe they want that like 
young buck you know like that that <laughs> the young lad like right, they, right. they used to have like that that high energy and like just to get attention like that yeah. again especially like if, if they put like all their validation and like sense of self sense of self and like self-worth into like their appearance the and then that image that and how faded they, how they over look, time yeah how they look with people out you know uh-huh and i feel like that's a bigger thing for guys with the whole like sugar daddy thing uh-huh and how like, I mean, if you, if you see, okay, so say you're at a restaurant and you see like a six year old dude with like an 18 year old girl. Well, first of all, you think <laughs> something, something weird's going on. Okay. But let's say like 25 year old girl, you're like, oh wow. Like that guy's doing well, you know? Uh huh. But then, cause it does dude, like it makes your public image look better. It does. Yeah. But you know, yeah. for a fact, that guy's money. <laughs> you're like, he's rich. That guy's rich. That's, yeah. That's the thing. Don't think much about it. It's like, he's rich. Good for him. Money, man. It all goes back to money. Yep. Yep. Money runs the world. Well, if, if if sex is involved at the end of the night, five hundred dollars, old lady, or if we're talking fifty or under, <laughs> you're doing. I, it, I'm you? doing it. I'm <laughs> doing it. I at this point in life, five hundred dollars is a lot of money. To oh me, no, so. no hate. Like I honestly, I might have to do the same thing, but it depends. Like the the problem is, is that like you're not gonna get to pick your battles. You know, yeah, you're not picking yeah. your dates. It's not like Tinder. Like you can't. <laughs> I right, swipe swipe right on this on this uh, fifty year old woman. You think you think they have that though for like sugar sugar relationships? If not, I mean we could. You and I we just Dude. came up with the idea. Get some call some there's, app developers real quick. There's got to be websites <laughs> for that though. There's got to be. There probably is something like that. I would. I I don't know if like we would know about it or have access to it right now. Right. I would. Yeah. I would imagine so. I'm sure because like that can't be that can't be like a that can't be like a we just thought of this type of thing. Like there's yeah, totally. people, people, cause how else do you get a sugar daddy? You know, I don't know. That's a good, it, dude, girls this age are down. Like it's a trade off. It's, it's an exchange. It's yeah, a, it's I'll a be, business would you deal. Do, would you be down? Well, yeah, we just said, we just talked about yeah, that. Yeah, I would be down. I would be down. Yeah. I mean, dude, it's a business exchange at that point. It's like, okay, this old man has something the girl needs money. Mm-hmm. And then the, the young girl has something the old man, I guess, not necessarily needs, but really, really wants. Right. Yeah. So it's like, it's kind of, it's just the trade off. And all that. But yeah, I don't know. You probably got to shake hands at the end of that business transaction. Dude, you might have to. <laughs> do you, by the way, do you know if I'm able to wear this out? Like, do they accept jerseys? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, I've seen people in there with jerseys before. Okay, I didn't know if there was like a jersey night. Actually, funny story. This is probably the most. This is one of the most noble stories I have noble. in my, in my right. arsenal. Um, so one night I go out with like a group of friends, and I'm pretty sure this might have been whenever Boogie was different. Like they they were like maybe had stricter rules or something. Because uh, I've noticed the vibes very different now. But they uh, they this dude went in with like a baseball jersey, and he was or a football jersey. That's what it was. Yeah. And he wasn't able to get in. And, and I literally took, I was wearing like a polo and I literally took the shirt off my back, gave it to my buddy. And then I just ran home. Wow. Yeah. I mean, this was like years ago. I don't know if I still would. And I was also a a big part of my incentive to do so was like, I was sketched out going back to the MIP thing. Like I was always sketched out going to the bars. I didn't have a fake. Like they, I was always relying on slipping a five under. Like I just, I didn't really fuck with it to start with. So I was kind of like. I was like in the crowd. I'm like, yeah. might as well give it to him. And then, but yeah, I just remember running home and this, this guy was like, he was really ripped guy with like 3%, like very, very small amount of body fat. But like the thing was super tight on me. So I'm like, Dude, your, boy, like your boy that you gave it to. Yeah. 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 That'll do it. <laughs> it's crazy. Like last weekend I went in a boogie with a hoodie and just no shirt under it. And is that a rapper name by the way? Boogie, boogie with a hoodie. <laughs> is that really? Yeah, yeah definitely. Is. Oh fuck yeah! Probably where he got it, dude. There honestly. you go. Yeah, but <laughs> from you, from you specifically. <laughs> right. Well, the guy, the guy told me at the door. He goes, "Oh, you got to take your hoodie off." I'm like, "Hey, I can't. Like, I don't have a shirt under this." They're like, "Oh, well, tuck your hood in to like the collar." <laughs> I'm like, "Dude, why? Really? Like, that looks way worse." Yeah, that looks terrible. Yeah. That looks way worse than if I had a hoodie. You just on have a fucking place. hump back. Yeah. Hey, yo, camel. I don't get that. Camel man. bitch. <laughs> That makes no sense. That doesn't make any sense to me. There's either. so many just like weird rules. Like you can wear sweatpants uh-huh. if like the strings are tucked in. What? <laughs> what? So I don't know. Man. I was just thrown off by yeah, like the uh, the whole like dress apparel thing. Yeah, it's like it's boogie, dude. Exactly. You're not going to a ballroom dance, you know? Yeah, it's, right. It's right. fucking boogie. It's a fucking college <laughs> bar. Calm down. There's broken glass and alcohol. This floor is so sticky. Like the floor is <laughs> always so sticky. Take it down a couple notches. Exactly. You know? Calm down. <laughs> well, we know we know you know justice, right? 
Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, we're getting in then. We're good. We're good. We're oh, good. Yeah, absolutely. I'm showing up naked tonight. Fuck it. All Dude, right. you might as well. Actually, it's funny you brought up uh, wearing a hoodie and boogie because, cause, uh, well, not the not the rapper, but I, I don't even right. know who the rapper is. I've just heard yeah. of him. But no, my buddy, he uh, he was in boogie, literally just standing there. Just standing there. Last, I think this was like a Thursday or two ago. And he walks in. I actually went out with him this night. And like we, we squat up. Our, our whole group goes in. And at this point, I'm, I'm like very independent. Whenever I go out, I just kind of like, I usually start with my group. And then I end up just like wherever the fuck else. Like yeah. within a few minutes. Like that's that's just like kind of kind of how I roll, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> just very independent. Just right. go do my own I thing. That. So I, I within like five minutes, I leave. And I come back, and my buddy's just standing there with the – well, he, he – okay, so keep in mind, he wore a hoodie this night, too. Yeah. He's just standing there, and I come back, like, 10 minutes later, and he's just got this, like, dime, this fucking dime with him. And uh, and they're just, like, kicking it, like, flirting and whatnot. And then I'm, like I'm, – I kind of, I just wave to him, and I'm, like, good job. And then I go do my own thing, and, like, he ends up taking this girl home this night. But he said because he was wearing a hoodie – and apparently his like vibe was different or something. This girl literally at the beginning. So this is like him telling me about this later on. Right. This girl literally just walks up to him and just starts like flirting and like hitting on him basically. Because he was wearing a hoodie. And it he 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 said it was because she said he looked different than all the other guys in this bar, and that he didn't look like a normal college student, and something about his hoodie made him stand out. But. And it it was weird too that she like noticed that because he's he's not like he doesn't go here he just right. uh, he moved down here to like like he found work in Springfield he went to he put he went to Milliken University up in right. like I think it's like Illinois or something but he uh yeah yeah he he just came down here and like he does work now but he like goes out with all the college kids and this girl just like started hitting on him for like pretty much because of his hoodie damn we we'll go home and put one on before we go out tonight. I know right <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, that's actually, that's like a thing in like, I don't know if you've ever gotten into or like read up on like any like pickup artist type shit or anything like that. Yeah, not too much. It's but. I'm not super into it. It's kind of, in my opinion, it's kind of manipulative. Uh, I'm not like yeah. a huge fan because it's kind of like, it, it's, it's interesting because there's some cool little tips and tricks, but it's kind of manipulative. So that, that's where I stand ethically well, on the like topic. How to, how to bring girls back? Pretty, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Like it's like yeah. these like dudes, like they're like all branded on youtube is like rsd and there's like this book called the the game by neil strauss of like pretty much these dudes yeah just being pickup artists and going out and saying all the right things and then bringing like hot girls back home uh, and yeah. they're like they're trying to teach you that but it's their tactics are kind of manipulative but they're also like insightful so you gotta like you gotta go in there with some ethics like if you're gonna listen to that shit definitely i'm sure there's a science to it oh yeah totally know? Damn, I'm gonna have to look at that. They just like break it down though. And just... But yeah, yeah. So it, my original point is that uh, they they do something called peacocking, and what they mean by that is like so like the peacock has like bright feathers. That's yeah. kind of where the term like derives from. Right. Uh, and you'll do something that makes you stand out from every other person in there, and then kind of like be like a more appealing and uh, more stand out ish. Like like for example, I'd even I'd even like know this was a concept, but I used to do this intentionally. I have this like bright pink polo that I like to wear out like somewhat frequently. And I'm like, Oh, this like, this makes sense. Like I'll be, I'll look different than everybody else in the aspect that I'll have a bright pink shirt on. Like how many people are wearing a bright pink shirt? Like a peacock. Yeah. No, yeah. I see, so I see what's I, going on. And like just wearing like kind of like random shit that makes you like stand out like a little bit more, but that's, that's pretty much where their like logic mm. comes from. Yeah. No, I could see that working for sure. Yeah, man. I don't know. That's interesting, though, that they they have like people dedicated to doing that. Like that's like their job, you know. It's like their lifestyle. Yeah, it's yeah, it literally is their job because they're getting paid for this shit now. Like they're like they're, they're like paid to do that. Yeah, they're like they have like oh seminars God. and shit. Wow, that's insane. I, I will say that. though, because I always thought I'm like, at least for me, I mean, the way I'm wired is like, I'm not I'm not necessarily somebody that's like all about the hedonistic hookup yeah. culture. Like it, it's. For me, I'm like, that would just get boring. Like, that would get boring. Especially if you got, like, that good at it. It's like, I would get bored. Like, I would literally get bored. Like, part of the fun is, like, the chase, you know? Yeah. And But uh, in the beginning of the book, which I only listened to, like, most, like, probably 75% of the audio book mm -hmm. of, like, that Neil Strauss book I was saying, uh, this dude, the very beginning, he's, like, foreshadowing to the end results of, like, what happens. And, like, the guy who's, like, the best at all this He's like suicidal at the end of the book. Really? Yeah, because he oh, can't yeah. find like a real connection or anything like that. That's real. gotta be so bad psychologically. Yeah. That's gotta be. 
Yeah. I feel like we're wired to like settle down, you know, have a family. Yeah, right. And I think that's the opposite kind of lifestyle. It's the exact opposite. <laughs> Even though that's just the college lifestyle. That's how it goes. But yeah, I don't know. Hopefully everyone grows out of that at some point. Yeah. But then again, I don't know. Because I feel like, well, I don't know. I don't know how it was when like our parents and everybody was like our age. I think about that all the time. Like you think it was like that when like your grandpa was in college and just running around? Oh, there's no way. Because Twitter's, I mean, not Twitter. Uh, Tinder's got to be a revolution, man. <laughs> well, no, just the whole the whole phone thing, and just like we're in the era of communication right now, like we're just constantly in touch with everybody. Totally, just always. Even when you're with them, when you go home, you got social media and whatnot. Like you're constantly, like, persuaded by people, basically, mm -hmm. or influenced. And yeah, no, I think that's definitely have something to do with it. But I don't know, dude. I'm if you're talking like the '60s and '70s, you know, uh -huh. like the whole free love thing. I think they probably, they probably had their fun. Oh, totally. <laughs> I would think. So. Oh, you're saying is it like as like hookup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I bet it's just as I bet it was like pretty hookup culture. Like, I, I feel like, like it, college just makes that environment. <laughs> For real, yeah. You don't think it was more relationship based back in the day? I bet it was more just because I feel like right now, especially. I don't even want to make this a gender thing. I I feel like it's a little bit more prevalent in women. I could be wrong. Who knows? What, the the but, relationship thing. Just yeah, I feel like I feel like people are overwhelmed with like they're like in like choice paralysis because of like phones, technology, Tinder. There's always a better option. Everybody you know. knows their fucking like all the choices out there, and it's like we like the, all the choices are like right in front of us, not just like what we experience on a daily basis. Oh yeah. Like like I don't know. Like even a girl posts a picture with a hot friend, and then tags her, and then you like like they're. I mean, I sound creepy right now, but like I know who girls are. That I don't know oh, yeah. because they get tagged in like girls that I do know, like their pictures, and then I'm like, oh, I, I've seen her before, I've seen her before, and it's like, oh, that's just a I've hot that girl before. that goes here. And then you gotta pretend when you meet him, you gotta pretend like you, like you have exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> no, but I don't really have any like that social media or really any of that. Well, I do like I forgot the password to my Instagram, and uh, so, and I've never posted anything on there or uh -huh. even like stories on Snapchat or anything like that. Like I don't know. I think it's kind of a waste of time, but st like, I mean, unless you're trying to like build a brand and like somehow make money off of it. Uh -huh. But I don't know. I think I think I'm all right with not getting too far into that. I feel like you start to lose a lot of like self esteem, you know, constantly just seeing like Instagram models and whatnot. You start to compare yourself a lot more. Yeah. To like photos or even like not even just the models, like just lifestyles. People on vacation all the time. You got that one dude. What's his name? Dan Bilzerian. Oh, like, yeah. You know, like you, you follow him. You're like, even epitome. if you're not thinking about it, you're like comparing your life to him. Like even if you're not consciously doing it, like at the end of the day, like, come on now. Because you, you, you got to start thinking about it. It's like, man, his life is cool. <laughs> and it, with, like with Damn, that comment, is, it's like my life. cool? Like exactly. That? Exactly. <laughs> I should be doing that. That's funny you say right now. That's funny you say that about the brand thing though, because I uh, I've never considered myself a social media dude, but like I've always been very infatuated with the idea of like building like a, a brand, and I, I hate using that word for like my yeah. myself, but building a brand around myself like via like this podcast would be like the product, I guess you'd say. Right. Uh, but like building that and then social media, I mean that's gonna be the platform. Because I just a few years back, I just kind of noticed I'm like, oh, like you could. You could do something creative and then be noticed for it, and that's never existed in history. And I've just been like, I've been like obsessed with that. Yeah. And I think it's crazy too about the internet is they put everyone on the same like platform, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no like discrimination, anything like that. Like, it's literally just like everyone's on the same platform. Like, you can start just making like, if you're going to do the brand thing, you can start make like making content and just like start producing shit. Mm -hmm. And like, if you have good shit, people are going to follow it, you know, like, yeah, regard yeah. regardless of what you're doing. So I think it definitely it's gives a lot of people more opportunity now than like back. It's definitely still like, if you know people, you know, like anything is, but like you said, with the opportunity, it's like the, the opportunity to maybe know somebody. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. You DM, you DM some famous dude and like, he likes your shit and he promotes you. It's like crazier things have happened. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, yeah I'm actually, I'm. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know what'll come of this or anything, yeah. but I've I found some dude. I just came across his like Instagram, and he's like an ex Navy SEAL. And I'm like, uh, someone in contact right now. Like we were trying to do like a little phone interview thing last right. night, 
uh, just to, like, pick each other's brains and then maybe do, like, a phone podcast or something. Yeah. But I was like, oh, that'd be cool. Like, I, I just came across this page. And without the internet, like, I wouldn't have, like, maybe gotten in contact with, like, an ex-Navy SEAL dude that's kind of, like, trying to do, like, athletic fitness training type of shit. That's tight, yeah. No, man, there's Navy SEALs. Nothing to mess with, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. But it's, it's definitely crazy out there, just the amount of people that you can be exposed to, you know? Like it's that wild. guy and just even that girl that was running, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, on the topic of, like, badasses, like Navy SEALs. Okay, so this is, like, a debate I've been thinking about a little bit, like, the past two days. Because I came across, like, a, as you call it, like, a Twitter fact kind of deal. But it's a it's a picture of a side-by-side of a silverback gorilla versus a grizzly bear. Right. And the two, uh, okay, so the two, this is how they, like, match up, right? Their bite force, pretty much the exact same. Like, the, the gorilla was a little bit stronger uh bite force but not too much like it was very pretty much the exact same uh height was the the bear is 10 feet tall and then the gorilla is like 511 so like human height bears are 10 feet tall yes what yes the fuck? i didn't know that and then i know right yeah wow it's massive whenever they just like stand up on their back damn if you would have said that i would have thought that the gorilla is bigger i would have thought that damn. I, I know i thought the gorillas were bigger than do they, 511 do they weigh more you know? though yeah, the, well, the, no, the gorilla, uh, the gorilla weighs five hundred, and then the grizzly weighs nine hundred. But, oh, but the gorilla, and I, don't, I don't know like where they're getting like the this lifting amount or like weight from. Yeah. But the the strength of the gorilla is can lift. Oh fuck, what was it? Oh, four times as much. It was like four thousand four hundred pounds, and then the yeah. bear can lift like one thousand one hundred. Damn, I don't know, dude. It's like a bigger body style for like a, or like for like a guy who's stronger that has a smaller frame. Yeah, right, right. And I've heard no, both arguments because I, I was really curious, especially with like your wrestling background. Like yeah. I was curious to see what you'd say because I, uh, I've heard like the argument of oh, if the grizzly gets him on the ground, like then the gorilla is screwed. And I've heard the exact the exact opposite. Yeah, I mean the bear's probably not doing like jujitsu though. Right, you know? true. Like, it's probably just. I feel like there's not really, like, a tactic to it. They kind of just, like, go at each other and try to fuck each other up. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. That'd be a good one, though. I'd like to see that for sure. But the, the gorilla could maybe, like, throw him off. He, right. he's, he's lifting a lot. I mean, well, he's strong. Well, if the bear's, like, ten times bigger, though, you know, mm-hmm. like ten, or, like, twice as tall, you know? I don't know. And I feel like the gorilla would be, like, going, like, striking force, like, punching almost. And I feel like the, the bear would be going, like, claws. I don't think I've seen a gorilla fight. I don't think do so they, either. Like, These are all they, assumptions. Do they, they use the their fists? I'm assuming they do. Wow. I feel like most people are assuming too that like the, a gorilla is fighting like a human, you know, because like they have the same build as us. Like the, to where they would go up and they'd be like fighting like a yeah, boxer, like, like pop, a pop, pop, pop. I, I don't know. I don't know what come with that. I don't know. I feel like they'd be more mobile, the gorilla would, and then more like coordinated with their hands and feet and stuff. But these are all assumptions. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, dude. That'd be a good one, though. I'd like to see that. Sign me up for that next time, <laughs> next time that happens. Just imagine, like, a gladiator type deal. <laughs> yeah, man. Have you ever gotten into, like, fight video, like animal fight videos on YouTube? Oh, dude, I get deep into kangaroo fights, like, on a consistent basis. Oh, no way. <laughs> dude, kangaroo fights are some of them. Do yourself a favor and look that shit up. Okay. that is the most entertaining. Dude, they, like, they'll be jumping and, like, boxing. And, like, what they do is they, like, jump and kick. No shit, okay. Yeah, they jump and, like, they'll kick you in the stomach. How tall are kangaroos? Like, if you had to guess. Some of them are, like, fucking huge. Are some really small? Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm sure. I'm Because sure I, I saw some lot. of the zoo, and I actually I had a debate on a podcast about this exact topic. <laughs> but I, 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 uh, so I saw some of the zoo, and they look like they were, like, four foot, really? like, four foot six or something. Like, they look fucking tiny. Could have been a baby one or something. Possibly. But there were, like, four of them, like, the exact same size. This is at San Luis Zoo. Really? But I've seen them online and they look huge. Like the ones online, I was like, because I was, I was like talking the hypothetical. I'm like, who would win in a fight? Like, could, like, do I think a human could win against a, like a another person, or do I think I could win against a kangaroo? Yeah. You think the, you, you think you could beat a kangaroo? Well, the, dude, those ones at the zoo, like they look. I mean, they were laying down. They were tiny. Like they were small. You could probably fuck one of those up. Probably. Like eight, both of them. I, but like, dude, not if, just... you, if you get kicked, if you get kicked in like the stomach, though, dude, you know how bad that's gonna hurt. 
Oh my in the nuts. <laughs> you would get sent to the ground. Like, cause they could probably kick really hard. Yeah. I don't know. I've never been kicked by a kangaroo. They, they can punch too. Yeah. But you have been, you've been maced. You've I've been tased. Been yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the tase any day though. Any day. I it's really know. not that bad. The tasing, well, uh-huh. I, not like the stun gun one, but like, oh, dude, it's yeah, it's not bad. Wow, okay. I can get one, man. If you if you want to if you want to go through it, <laughs> I I like get one isn't like buy one or like get oh, one. Oh no, I'm, in... I'm sure one of my boys has one. Okay, no, um, uh, somebody has one that works at traps. I forget who, but some one of the girls. Is there has any one. like after pain, like pain no, like the next day? Not at all. It's just with like the mace, zap? with the mace a little bit. Okay, but not the taser. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. But yeah, man. I don't know if I'd try it. I don't know. I'd I'd probably if I saw you do it, I'd probably do the it. The taser? Yeah. Oh dude, the yeah. taser's not bad. You can actually like crank my boy bought in like high school, he bought like probably like twenty tasers and it was just like selling them. <laughs> he was just peddling tasers out of his locker. There you go. And oh, in school he's selling yeah. these. No <laughs> shit. Wow. I bought one that's from funny. him though. That's how that's how it all started, really. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, dude, twenty bucks. Yeah, you how know? do you how do you get a hold of them? I think he just ordered like bulk online. I guess he got a deal or something. Oh, there you go. Oh, dude, we bring, bring him Alibaba. To, bring him to <laughs> bring him to parties and whatnot, and just tasing everybody. That's funny. That sounds like a good time to me. You know, actually, I I get some nu- um, brass knuckles and some nunchucks right there. Damn, you get wild down here. Yeah, it gets pretty rowdy sometimes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> my boy, like in high school, he used to whenever he'd try to get in a fight, he'd walk around with like a roll of nickels. Instead of like the brass knuckles, you know. Oh, you'd hold them. Hand. Yeah. Oh, so it like reinforces the punch. Yeah, I feel like that would. Work. Plus, your hands dude. are heavy as fuck too. After yeah, that, you know? I've never thought about that. Yeah, but brass knuckles, dude. Brass knuckles will fuck somebody up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Even, whenever you said rolling nickels, I was thinking like, oh, putting sticking them, in there. them out, yeah, like between the finger wedges. Yeah. But I don't know. That'd be weird. That 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 would that would probably it would definitely wow. work. Yeah. Yeah, I've never thought about that before. <laughs> Next time you get in a fight. There you go. Yeah. You, you get in a lot of fights? No, no. I don't plan time? on it. Uh, actually, well, I got in one with my, I told you about this at Boogie, but I, uh, with my roommate Trud at the beginning of this semester. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, a, yeah, that's yeah. probably, I mean, I got in like a little bit of something. We were playing King of the Hill back in like seventh grade. And, and, uh, no, I guess this was sixth grade. Not that it matters. But, uh, I somehow, I, me and my buddy were like, ganging up on this other dude because he was kind of a boner and uh, <laughs> and, uh so we, we after soccer practice one day and we're like pushing him down the hill and we're, we're kind of getting the better of him because it was two against one i mean oh, dude, king it, of the hill was the shit by that the was way. so fun it, uh what's the the flag game too capture the flag that game's fun too Come on now. Come on that now. game's fun <laughs> But yeah, he we kind of are getting the better of him. Then he gets like mad, and he somehow gets me on the ground to where my back's to him, and he just starts Trud kicking me. You're talking me. about at the King of the Hill, uh, at King of the Hill. Okay, at, yeah, on top of the hill, and he somehow gets the better of me, and I'm like laying like uh, facing the other way, and he starts kicking me. He kicked me like once, and then uh, and then my buddy, and at the time, like this is a big deal. He's like, get the fuck off of him or away from him or something, and he just stopped. Everybody's like. He just said the F word and did seventh grade, dude. That's that's a big deal. Yeah, true. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, the only other fight I've been in is uh with my roommate at the beginning of the semester. Yeah. We weren't even like swinging. What about you, dude? Last one, actually, me and Pat fought um sophomore year, but it was no bad blood. We kind of just wanted to see who'd win. Oh know, no shit! After the bar one time, and I don't know. I was fucked up. Like, and I mean, we obviously both were. Uh huh. And basically what had happened was he, like, stuck me a couple times, and then I, like, tackled him, right? Because, like, realistically, I'm not a boxer. Uh, wait, where's if, this at? Where's this this at? is in uh, Porter, like these uh, okay. apartments downtown. We used to go to go up to Boogie, 25-cent drinks where we're going tonight, and then just come back. That was the days when we'd be drinking Cherry Admiral and just making poor decisions, you know? Okay, okay. So not much changed, but, like— That's the quote of this this podcast right, yeah. so far, drinking Cherry Admiral, <laughs> Ad- Admiral— and making poor decisions. I can't drink that shit anymore, by the way. But anyway, we get back and well, we're, we're, we've been talking about it for a while. Like, oh, like you think you'd beat me in a fight? I'm like, yeah, probably. And he's like, I don't think so, man. Like, I, like super, super, like, like 
logical and like sophisticated about it, right? We're not like, fuck you, I'll beat your ass. Like, it's not like that. We're like, oh, like, I, genu- I genuinely think I would beat you in a fight. Like, Sitting <laughs> next to the fire, so, some books on the coffee table. <laughs> and then we get drunk. We're like, all right, dude, well, let's just do it. We start, actually, we start off wrestling. Okay. And he's like, well, I'm not going to wrestle you because you're obviously going to win because I don't wrestle. And he's like, let's just fight. I'm like, okay, that sounds like a good idea right now. And then, so, yeah, he definitely stuck me a couple times, but I had him. I had him like Did you take him to the ground? No, I picked him up in the air and he said I was gonna slam him, dude. I was actually gonna set him down gently. Uh uh-huh. but like so he hit the couch and then went down, then I'm on top of him and then I think it got broken up. Either broken up or like we kinda just called it. But yeah. I was about to give him that Khabib ground and pound though. Oh, there you that, go. Dude. Yeah, so he knew once he got taken to the ground, he's like, Oh fuck him. Oh fucked. yeah, well I mean the majority of people, when you put them on their back, what like what are they gonna do? Jail. You know? Jail. That's that's the one thing. Like, I don't think I could beat a lot of people in fights, but like, I mean, if you take people down, they're not gonna know really. It's gonna stun them, especially if they're. I drunk. bet you could win. I, I bet you would win against most people, just because uh, at least like the average person, especially yeah. the average yeah, college the student. Average person, I'd say. Just because you could. Uh, if, I mean, if you have like a decent takedown, which I'm sure you do with wrestling yeah. experience, you just take them down to the ground, and then they're kind of screwed. <laughs> It's not like they're going to pull up their guard. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> bust out an arm bar or something. Like, no, no one knows how to do that. You don't realize how helpless you are, like, in, especially in, like, a grappling situation until you, like, try oh, yeah. it. And then you're like, wow, I'm Absolutely, and that's bad. the whole thing with, like, Conor McGregor and Khabib. Like, uh-huh. Did you watch that fight? I did, Are you yeah. Are you big in the UFC? A little bit, a little bit. Not really. Yeah, well, like, that's, like, the epitome of that. Like, Conor's just a great, like, boxer, basically, which is why he did so well with, like, Floyd Mayweather, you know? Uh-huh. And then fucking Khabib's wrestling and shit. He did exactly what, like, he said we was going to do. Uh-huh. He just would take him down and ground upon him, you know? And that works so well. Like, especially it's jiu-jitsu, or it's uh, MMA, you know? It's not just boxing. Uh-huh. Like, it might be more entertaining, but, like, it's just how it is. Like, you know, you ever heard of Ben Askren? No, I haven't. So, he is a Missouri wrestler guy, wrestling at Mizzou. Okay. He's on the Olympic team, and he just got into the UFC. And uh, he's... He's he's doing pretty fucking good. Really? But the thing is, is that like he people call him boring because what he does is he kind of just takes you down and like mauls you. But like that's smart, you know. Like he's not getting hit. He's not gonna have CTE as bad. True. He probably will have it. True. His last one was pretty bad. Whoever's but, calling him boring probably just doesn't understand fighting. They don't. Super people, well, well, things go to the ground. It's like people the the at the casual like like MMA fan doesn't really know. Like and even I don't even really fucking know. I don't do uh-huh. jiu-jitsu. Like. All that, so I don't know. I, I definitely, find, I definitely that, find it really interesting, though. Uh-huh. Just watching all that, I don't know. I it's it, interesting. It really is. It's so primal. It's something like the gladiators, you know. It's like something about us wants to like, or thinks that that's entertaining, and it is, you know. It is. Do people yeah. find it to death. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was watching uh, like Hoist Gracie, and like yeah. how he like like UFC number three or something like that, mm-hmm. like back in the nineties. And how he just like fucked everybody up in a gi, yeah. in a gi, and just like destroyed everybody, just to, like prove like jujitsu is like the dominant martial art or yeah. something like that. Well, was that when like they had people who were completely separate? Like you'd have like a boxer, and then like a like an actual who only does boxing, and then like a guy like a ju- like a jujitsu guy. Possibly, I I know the evolution of the sport wasn't nearly as far. I don't know the details like super into depth. Yeah, I don't know. There's some crazy shit if you look back in the day. I mean, still now, dude. Like, I feel like everyone's like blended now. Like, I feel like back in the day, people were just jujitsu, right? Yeah, like one thing. Now it's really mixed, which is like where the sport needs to be. Like, you, yeah, you, yeah, you gotta. People, you gotta, are, people are getting more into it though. I feel like, like it's becoming more and more of a like a mainstream thing. It does seem to be that way. Yeah, I was thinking about like the the influence like Joe Rogan has on it too, because like I, I ultimately like he was uh he was in the main. I, I don't want to say the main. He was like a portion of like why I decided to. And again, I, I haven't done a ton of jujitsu, but like he's like the reason I kind of like took the jump, and like I'm like, yeah, I'll try it. You're doing jujitsu now? Uh no, no. Well, I did it like two summers ago, oh, and like really? he was like the reason I like took the jump. I'll probably do it this summer as well. How'd you like but it? I like it. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> it's really interesting, man. I think it'd be good. Where do you go at? Actually, Tony Hartman. He texted me the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, I know him. Yeah, he yeah. He's uh, yeah, he's he's been doing it too. He's like, oh, yeah, wow. he's he's probably like twenty practices in, but I just do it at this gym like right next to my house in St. Louis. What's it called? Uh, Wolf's Den. Wolf's Den. Wolf's Den, yeah. It's on K and, uh, K and 70 now. They just relocated. <laughs> I, like, just found that out, like, two days ago, but. Yeah, my boy always, want, he does it, like, he goes to this gym called Vagi in St. Louis, mm-hmm. and it's, like, 
Like, there's there's people who aren't that good there, like casual guys. But then there's also, like, amateur fighters, like, trying to be pro there. So, like, they don't fuck around, really. So, that's... That's what that's, most that's of my gym thing. was. Yeah. Like, I'm, well, I'm like, definitely by like far, pro, like, pro the guys. worst. Do I? Pro guys, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But also, like you said, like, yeah, pretty much exactly what you said. But it's it's definitely majority, like, people trying to go pro, like, amateur yeah. UFC fighters. It's kind of expensive, MMA. though, man. You know? That's, that's the one thing. That's why... I don't know. I say I would have do it, but I would have done it, but that's just an excuse. Like it's like a hundred bucks a month. And I feel like I feel like there'd be some. I'd almost have to unlearn a lot of my wrestling. You know, I don't know. I'm not not sure how that works, but like for example, like the last thing you do in wrestling is go to your back. You know, Mm -hmm. that's just the last thing you do. And like jujitsu, that's just your guard. You know, that's just like your go to. Maybe you would still. It would. It would definitely like be a learner's curve at the beginning of going against your instinct, but then you'd become like. You become uncomfortable or comfortable where you're uncomfortable right now, yeah. or at least where your instincts tell you not oh, to go. Yeah, for sure, and I think any mad experience is probably gonna help. But shit, I haven't wrestled in like three years. So. I've never thought about that because they always say like if you if you learn like uh, uh, for example at work right now, like I I know how to like edit in Movie Maker, and then I was learning like this this system called After Effects, which is a little bit more complex. And I was like, there was a learner's curve, and I'm like, I wonder if it's harder for me to learn because I've never done or because I've done this on another program, or if it's like easier for me to learn in right. that regard and I, I i would imagine that it's easier for you to learn jiu-jitsu but i i don't know i mean probably just i mean there there are a lot of similarities you know but there's definitely just some things you'd have to unlearn like i don't know my boy his name's liam he'll actually be down here this weekend tomorrow but he was oh, telling cool. me that you got to keep your head to the in, like the inside like when you for example when you shoot a double leg you like a lot of times you can't shoot on the inside but like whenever I'll do them I'll go to the head to the outside okay and dude you'll get um I don't even know what the fucking word is guillotine Kimura maybe or something not it's definitely was not it Kimura. a joke yeah it's like your head's right here and they just grab it and, yeah it's called the guillotine yeah guillotine that, yeah yeah but um yeah like I know I would get that shit all the time and I'd get so fucking frustrated because uh-huh. when I'm doing it my I'm like, I turn my brain off and I kind of just react. Totally, yeah, yeah. And it's that primal state, like we were saying. Oh earlier. yeah, well, <laughs> my like, pr- like base one, you know, like my basic motor patterns are like that of wrestling. Okay. So I feel like that would definitely cause some problems. But I bet um, it'd be really cool for you in the element of at least uh, just trying out like different, like learning like Kimura, learning different chokes, learning different like positions. You bet. You get choked out there a lot. Oh yeah, like, like, <laughs> like how cool. multiple times. Oh no, no, you tap, you tap. Oh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, you, you as soon as like you know they get the better of you, you just give yeah. them two taps. But I, I, I bet you would like, I bet it'd be beneficial and really cool to learn like it's just different practical. chokes. It's practical and, too, you know. True, true. Like you get in a fight, you choke a dude out. I will. The guard is where I struggle like significantly. My right. guard. I mean, like, yeah, you can get somebody in a guard, but like, whenever you're in guard, right? Like, or whenever you're, you're like, you're on your back, you have somebody in your guard. Your main goal at that point is to sweep or submit, and like I pretty much know like I know one sweep and a few submissions, but I suck at all of them. Yeah. If that makes sense. And that's the thing. I feel like I don't know about jujitsu, but it probably is the same thing. But like for wrestling, dude, there's like a there's like a solution for everything. Like for every, for yeah. every move, there's like five other moves you can do. You know, like and as you get as you like start to get better at it, you like you just chain wrestle. You do everything together. And it's crazy. Like if you see like like I, I remember watching like my two coaches going, uh-huh. and they would just be like, you know, uh, you ever see Flow Wrestling? No, you no. Ever heard of that? It's like this. It's pretty much like the only wrestling like media thing. They got like all the social medias and whatnot. Oh, very but cool. My coach, my coach's, my high school coach's brother like runs it basically, and he would come in, and this dude's a fucking freak. Like he would come in, and those t- the two brothers would wrestle, and they would just be going crazy, like. That's cool. I remember watching that freshman year. I'm like, all right, like, yeah, I want to get good at this. Okay. And That's inspiring to see somebody, like, good oh, as yeah. fuck. Especially when you're young. True. Yeah, man. Especially, I, I don't know. Did you ever wrestle against them, too? Oh, yeah, in practice all the time. And you're like, wow, I'm oh, no, bad. They, they beat your ass. Well, what they do, they're, he's, he's good at, like, going down to your level and just making you work. So, like, this dude, there's a rumor that he was on, like, crack, like, all the time, like, Obviously he wasn't, but like this dude had more energy than I've ever seen a person have. Like, really? Oh my god, he would just be doing sprints like before practice and shit. You just put it all into wrestling. Yeah, I guess. That's what, what a dude! That's crazy. 
it's crazy, dude. Just seeing seeing how like into it they are. Because uh-huh. that's the thing. I feel like people that are into like sports, like jujitsu and wrestling, uh-huh. you're either all you're either not in or you're all in. Right. Yeah. It's not something you just kind of do. It's not something you just dabble in. But yeah, I can't. I personally, I have only dabbled in it. So. Yeah. But I, I no, mean, I get what you're saying. Like in the the love that those like fighters have for their sport is. It's it's a really interesting passion that I've not really seen because like every time I go there like I I went back this past December and trained for like a week or two mm-hmm. and then that uh, that whole Keenan shit went down and I kind of yeah. I kind of I don't know lost lost uh, my drive I guess you'd say I don't right. know if that's an excuse or a, a life hit uh-huh. a lot of bullshit but um uh, besides the fact uh where was it going with that oh like like same dudes I saw from the summer like same exact guys like they're in there they're getting after it and like. It, there's a lot of admiration for that. That's really cool. Yeah, it's the guys that keep showing up and constantly just keep going. And that's what it is. It's their life, man. Like, I didn't really give a fuck about it until – well, I cared, obviously, but, like, I didn't really, like, really focus on getting good until, like, junior year going into senior year. Okay, absolutely. And, yeah, that was, like, the first time I was, like, really trying to, like, do some shit. You know, like, I never really had goals before that, like, at all. And then, like, I finally, like, got into that. So that's so- definitely, like – one of the more important things. What I was did. that experience like for you? Dude, it was just going to practice a lot, like with just one coach and like, you know what I mean? I was studying for like the ACT or some shit too at the same time. And I never really like was busy or nothing like that, you know? But up until that, uh-huh. like, oh yeah, like doing shit feels better than not doing shit, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so you start to get that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Like how, like setting a goal in a sport and yeah. like, do you think that drive, like uh, that goal setting mentality of like learning that, like implementing purpose and creating purpose yeah. in your life? Like, do you think that like kind of triggered something in you? Oh dude, a hundred percent. Like you definitely, you def like there's like a, it's like a reward system basically. Yeah. And if you have like a purpose thing, you know who, uh, what's his name? Dr. Jordan Peterson is. Dude, I am – yes, yes. <laughs> okay. I fucking – I've been listening – like, I kind of – Yeah. I listen to Joe Rogan a fair amount now. Yeah. I probably listen to Jordan Peterson, like, Dude, twice as he's much. he's got some crazy shit, and he just – the ability he that he, he can, like, awesome. explain shit, like, complicated shit and explain it, it's wild. But anyway, I was I listening to – I fucking love that you I was listening that. to that one of his awesome. things, and he, uh-huh. was, he was talking about how there's, like – the human reward system, you know, like we talked about dopamine earlier, like mm-hmm. the instant gratification thing, you do something and immediately like a brain chemical goes off and you feel happy, you know, you can either do that from things like that, or you can, if you have like a goal that you think is like worth doing, then every, every time you do something to get closer to that, you're also like releasing dopamine. Okay. So like, you know, you feel good. You're driven to doing shit and you're not just like getting it from everything else. That's it's so, so true, yeah. Yeah, so, like, that's another way to do things. And that's one thing, like, whenever I get really into, like, drinking and partying and doing dumb shit, it's when I have nothing going on. Yep. Like, right now, like, I'm kind of just waiting for grad school to start, so mm-hmm. I don't really have anything, like, goals or any, like, things to do. Like, and realistically, I probably should find shit, uh-huh. but, like, right now, it's just, I'm still just kind of waiting for the next point. So, and, like, that's the only time, like, I drink. Like, I wouldn't be drinking tonight if I had shit to do. True. Yeah, that's a good point. So I think a lot of it can be solved by just doing more shit throughout the day. That's what he always preaches too is like yeah. responsibility, response, like adding more responsibility is as <laughs> counterintuitive as it might sound. Like it creates meeting. Yeah. It oh, creates absolutely. meeting. And I don't know if I've ever heard him say this, but something I've been thinking about lately and I think it's kind of been a result of what he said, but something I kind of came up with, I'm like, Hey, I, I sound like an asshole. Like, yeah, I thought of this myself. I just want everybody to know I thought of it myself. No, no, but uh, it, like what I've I've been thinking about a little bit lately is like, it's it's not like you you. Uh, I saw somebody post something the other day saying chase purpose, like chase meaning, but in my opinion, I think that's like the uh, semantics behind that, like that wording of that phrase is kind of stupid. I think you should you should create purpose, or not stupid, but it, it's a weak weak way, like. I think I think if you want purpose or meaning in your life, you should create it for yourself. Yeah, and I think that's just finding what you want to do, and that's the hard part for most people, is just figuring out what it actually is. Because if you got you got to figure out if you want to figure out what you want, you got to figure out who you are, and you can ultimately never fully know who you are. 
So, yeah. oh man, we could go on on this like <laughs> existential crisis type shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, is it finding yourself or like creating yourself? You know, I don't know. And a lot of existentialists are gonna argue that you don't. There is no such thing as self. So, yeah. yeah. Oh no. When I first, I when that like I took like psychology one hundred and one or something uh-huh. like two years ago, and that's when they first started saying that, and I was like, what is going on in here? Like, there is no self. It's all just. I never heard that in psychology, really. No, in uh, ph- philosophy. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, and I don't know. It's some. It's like some philo- philosophical theory. I don't know. All that blows my mind. Dude, I wish I would have taken philosophy. I never took it. It's pretty cool. You have to write a lot of essays. And oh stuff really? About that. I don't know. Honestly, I would major in psychology if I could. I just find it so interesting. Hey, dude, it's fucking awesome. I just feel like you don't really. Unless I don't think you can't really make that much money off. That's what everybody says. Unless you get like a PhD in it. Yeah, and And I'm not trying to stay in school that long. (laughs) It's just that's just me. Same. I don't know. Well, right now I actually had to change my major Uh because I forgot to take a class. Right, and I was like, "Fucking adaptive PE or something." So Uh, yeah, yeah, which is uh, completely my (laughs) fault. But like the thing is, it's literally they don't even have tests. They just ride tricycles and like hit wiffle balls and whatnot. You know, Uh, it's like I don't know. Anyway, I even fake cried to the teacher. And she still didn't let me in. You fucking fake that's, cried. That's heartless, dude. Fucking First of all, right. that's heartless. Yeah, that is heartless. I, I mean, I wasn't porn, but dude, I was tearing up a little bit. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's impressive. That's dude. awesome. I was like, <laughs> no, but yeah, so she didn't let me in. I talked to so many people, and then I ended up having to change my major to general studies so I could graduate on time. And I called Mizzou. And I was like, yeah, so I, I still need to start in the summer, but I forgot to take this class. And they're like, all right, honestly, just graduate any way you can. So I'm like, all right, I've changed my major to general studies now. So <laughs> I had to pick up like three more classes. And that's crazy. That's where we're at right now. And like, so it's like, but you still pull it off. Yeah. Just so on time. Wow. Yeah. So it's Impressive, like, man. it's like, it's basically three fields. It's kinesiology, chemistry and psychology. Okay. And like, I had to take like certain, like 15 credits in each of them or something like that. Okay. But yeah, so I had to pick up all these psych or this it's a psychology class. And that is super interesting. It's like adolescent. So like like it's like just growing up. Oh really? Yeah. They, like that's what it's called, adolescent, adolescent psychology. psychology. Yeah. Dude, that's interesting. It's all about just like because like I mean, if you go to therapy, they're gonna chalk it up to your childhood usually. True. True. And so it kind of just is all with that. We are just ripple effects of our who we were as kids. Right. So spit some facts. Like I hate to like throw it, put you on the spot right now, <laughs> but like, is there anything like really cool that stuck out to you? I mean, there's just all types of shit. Like, like when you're when you're you can either get too much attention, you know, mm-hmm. or not enough attention, and it's like a balance. Oh, like wow. when you're young, and it's like different on everybody. Like, and based on based on that, they say that you'll end up certain ways. So I thought that was wild. The other thing is like I have I well not to interject right now, but I what I've kind of noticed is I'm not gonna name drop right now, like we were saying before the pod, <laughs> but uh. And I they, again, my my upbringing wasn't perfect or anything, especially like in this regard. And if anything, I was probably a little closer to this the coddled side. But I've I've noticed some people in my life that were like kind of coddled right now, and like I, I can kind of notice. I'm like, dude, like you 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 should know that at this point in life. Like not to say like you're this age, you should know this, but like I'm like, and then it, I've been around them and their parents, and I'm like. Dude, you were fucking coddled. Like you were coddled, and I, I'm not hating on that person right now. There's a, their specific person coming to mind, but like, it kind of goes back to like leaving your comfort zone or like not leaving your comfort zone and like facing that adversity and how that's gonna breed growth. Oh, when you're when you have to have shit go wrong when you're young, I feel like you yeah. have to to a point, and that's what I said. Like, if you have too much comfort, you'll end up like coddled like that and like kind of entitled. You think everything is like around you, you know, typically. I know a lot, like when you said that, I know a ton of people that comes to mind. But anyway. Or, or, or you just be, don't take on the initiative to like right, do shit. Right. And like, Cause, like cause, fucking Because no matter up. what, no matter what, your parents are going to have money and they're going to give you money no matter what, you know? Yeah. So you know you're safe. You don't need to risk. You don't need to take risks. You don't need to do anything else. It's like you don't have like necessity driving you. Right. Yeah, that's exactly. Not like a driving that's, force. that's the other end is that like you can't have too much of that either. Mm. Otherwise, well, I mean, you can. Feel defeated maybe? I, I'm just I feel guessing. Like, I feel like, yeah. Kinda, you kind of get burnt out, and you kind of don't trust anybody. Mm-hmm. You definitely have like attachment issues. Interesting. Okay. But yeah, to be honest, I've pretty much just been quizletting all the tests up to this point. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So I'm have a lot more information for you to cram <laughs> for this final. So that's, that's how I was my international that. marketing class. I'm like, this is kind of interesting, but like Quizlet exists. Dude, well, so how, like, how about everything it? being on Quizlet? 
I'm like, that what's, is crazy. what's that about? That's a revolution. I know. That's... Like, I was talking to this girl in dental school. Like, dent, like or not dental school. Dental hygienist school. But she's like, yeah, all the, everything's on Quizlet. <laughs> like, how? Like, I feel like that's the point where you should probably, well, first of all, they should probably check that. <laughs> I'm surprised, like, a lot of my classes, I'm like, damn, like, I thought this would be changed at this yeah, point. Because is... it's been like that all of college. At least yeah, for me, yeah. like, it's all of college. And, like, I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like it's kind of just it it they they should change their tests after a while because like realistically we should probably be learning some of this shit uh huh like we're paying for it you know I don't know especially like, especially for, like five hundred level classes true <laughs> yeah. but like it, ultimately too like you're at a disadvantage if you're actually doing it the honest way then so yeah. it like creates this ethical dilemma it's like well why are you at a disadvantage. <laughs> Because then you're actually going to get, like, a lesser score. Because, like, I mean, if I Quizlet right now, yeah. I did all – so I had, like, 18 quizzes for my entire semester. And, like, midway through the semester, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. And I took, like – it wasn't even that much time. It was, like, an hour and a half. And I did all my quizzes for the entire semester because I could. And, like, did them ahead. And I got 10 out of 10 on all of them. Yeah. If I would have done them honestly, it probably would have taken them – it probably would have taken me about three and a half hours. I'm just throwing out a random number. And then I wouldn't have gotten – 10 out of 10 on every single one. And the thing is, a lot of that isn't even going to be like on the test, you know? Damn. A lot of it's just <laughs> it's just other information from the chapters. Like, I kind of stopped buying textbooks and everything, you know? Yeah. Because, yeah. first of all, you, you can Google things now, you know? Mm-hmm. And everything you need to know, you can Google. Plus, I, I can figure shit out way easier when I do that than if I'm going flipping through textbooks. I don't know. You think at some point we're going to get rid of that and it's all going to be online? I think it's going to evolve inevitably in some way. As far as, like, where, I feel like that's beyond my imagination. I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's already, like, online universities that are just online. Oh, really? Yeah. But I don't know. It's still, like, printed out textbooks or, like, PDF textbooks. But still, I feel like a big part of it is, like, going through, like, living in the dorms. Like, I always tell people, like, you should live in the dorms. I agree. Like, if you're going to college, I feel like a big part of it is living, like, not with your parents. Like, I feel like that's where I grew the most is from not being with them. And it comes back to the whole coddling thing when you're young. It's like, no matter who your mom is, she spoils you a little bit, you know? Totally, unless, totally. Unless you don't and she have, should. Unless she you should. don't have a mom or, like, something like that. But realistically, you probably have somebody in your life that treats you good. Yeah. You probably do. And you should. Yeah. But it comes to a certain point, I feel like, where it's good to break away from that, you know, get those birds out that nest and just start living. That's Find funny you say you that. Because I, I literally, like, listened to that first time ever hearing this, too. But, like, Jordan Peterson saying that exact really? topic is, like, like, yeah, get away from home. And, like, the reason you should get away from home is so that you can find your own identity outside of your house. And also, I don't know about you, man, but, like, I'll go home and it's, like, I, I, I love my family. Like, I love my family. Don't get me wrong. But, like, I go home and it's, like, the same shit, if that makes sense. Dude, it's, like, I, nothing's changed since so I've left. So, whenever I was in high school and even freshman year of college, I was super, like, introverted and, like, shy almost. Like, I lived down the hall from Trud, and I really didn't know him until this year. Oh, really? Okay. Like, I live, like, three doors down from Trud. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, wow. And Freddie, and I didn't even know him until this year. I've been to that dorm then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, um... Like, when I go home, I think I kind of regress back into that a little bit. Like, Ooh. it's not, it's not like, night and day, you know? But, like, I feel like a little bit, just to the point where I definitely, I'm definitely glad that I'm not, gra- well, I'm graduating, but I won't be going home for another three years, you know? Uh-huh. I think that's good for me to just get away for a while. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Find out some more. Plus, that's dude, I'm, really just, I'm just a really late bloomer, dude. Like, I grew an inch taller last year. Yeah. How old? How old am I? 22. To, in 21, you grew yeah, an inch taller. 21 to 22, I That's grew an inch. That's crazy. I know. Like, I can't grow a beard yet and shit, too. That's crazy. Yeah. Late bloomer, man. That's it. Well, why would you bring up late bloomer? bloomer? I don't know. Honestly, I was kind of just talking. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah. I didn't know if you meant, like, personality-wise. Because I always felt that way with myself. Like, I felt like my my brain didn't, like, develop fully. Like, I used to space the fuck out and like now yeah. i feel like i have a pretty decent attention space especially oh, yeah. with conversation like oh yeah 100 percent. that's definitely something that helped a lot is just talking to people and like not being not getting anxiety not being afraid of like just approaching people you know yeah like some of my best friends that i know now like i just like walked up and started talking to them you know and girls are the same way like that's just how it is but i don't know why do you think that is you think that's just like how you were born or you think that's like something with you growing up I don't know. I don't know if it was like a developmental thing or, or whatnot. 
That's yeah. a, that's an interesting thought though, because I like it was like pretty extreme. Like I I was like infamously like known as like ditzy. Like kind of like people like oh so dude it's hundred percent really hundred percent in high school uh huh yeah really how oh, so absolutely I mean I just wouldn't think things through uh huh and like I I was almost like I don't know if I'd say like coddled but like just maybe in I, your I own just, little bubble yeah kind of yeah absolutely and I, one thing I think that definitely didn't help is I'd, I'd lose a fuck ton of weight for wrestling every year. Uh-huh. Like, my biggest one, I think I went from senior year, I went from 155 to 138. Okay. Which is, like, pretty big if you're already stupid lean, you know? Like, if you're already, like, underweight and you do that shit. That's like, a lot that's of weight. Bad. That's Dude, a that's lot gonna of weight. that's going to fuck with your hormones. It's going to fuck with everything. Like, and it definitely did. Plus, my diet was shit. I didn't know what I was doing, dude. Uh uh-huh. <laughs> I didn't know at all. You just wanted the end result. Yeah, I just wanted to like lose all that weight, you know. Uh-huh. Yo, who's that? We got a surprise guest. Yeah, hey, what's good? Hey, sorry. How you doing? You. No, you're cool. Hey, podcast. Hello. <laughs> Getting ready to get a pump in, baby. You're going right now? Yeah. Oh, right. Twenty minutes. Hell yeah. yeah I'm sorry, to say hi. Oh no, no, you're totally cool, man. I'm you glad you came out. You guys going out? Yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, bro. It's gonna be rough. I might, I might head out. Where are you going to, Boogie? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Twenty-five cent drink, dude. I'll you gotta. Up. I'll text you when I get done. Right on. I'm trying to fucking, I'm going to Florida, bro. I'll talk to you later, but I'm going to Florida for the summer. I'm trying to, I got to stay yoked for these hunts. <laughs> there you go. I feel that. Hell oh, yeah. Staying yoked for the honeys. Dude, you have to in Florida. Man. That would be cool living on the beach. What were we saying? Uh, late bloomer. Late, and you're saying dropping weight. Oh, yeah, the whole thing. And I think that probably had something to do with it, I feel like. Uh-huh. Like delaying puberty almost. Because like all my brothers, they can like grow beards and like are tall and whatnot Mm -hmm. like i don't know i think that 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 could have had something to do with it i don't know and just nutritionally like i had a lot of shit growing up just like sugar and everything i don't know we were talking about this a little bit before the podcast but there's so much shitty information out there yeah yeah about just nutrition and just that's the best thing the best thing and the worst thing about the internet is that anybody can post anything it's a good point (laughs) that's a really good point yeah That's, that's how it is like there's you got you got some people who just like Google shit every once in a while or read like a headline like hey eggs are bad, and then they're like um, I ate eggs and like my dick fell off and I died you know that type of shit. That's what I noticed whenever I got really into nutrition is that yeah. exact thing. It's like oh this I have to like unlearn something because this contradicts that and it's like I don't know what to believe right now. Well, and that's one thing like the whole thing that we were talking earlier about the cholesterol too. Like, did you know that they took off the the tolerable upper limit for like dietary cholesterol. Not until you told me. Exactly. Like, don't you think they should announce that? I'm sure they probably did, but like, you would think that like that's kind of a big deal, you know? I, how how recent was this? 2015. Is it 2010 or 2015? This has been a while, then. Yeah, this has been a while. I know, but like, you know how how all about like the cholesterol wow. is bad. Well, if you actually look at it, cholesterol is the precursor to all your steroid hormones. Really? So you're not having testosterone. You're not having any of that uh-huh. unless you're eating cholesterol. And you're, 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 um, I forget what organ it is. Something makes cholesterol in you, but like, I don't know. It's, it's definitely important. There's not a big correlation between dietary cholesterol and blood cholesterol. Okay. Like. And that's definitely like the big argument for what's the what's the difference between disease. blood cholesterol and dietary cholesterol? It's I mean it's pretty much just just the stuff you eat versus what's when what's what is actually dude that's a good question I'm, I feel like I don't I don't know honestly I need to do more research about that shit okay I, and I'm gonna be for this one project I got or this paper I got coming up. So I know a lot more here a couple of weeks, but um, I respect that answer. I yeah, respect it. I'm not gonna pretend to know what I'm fucking talking about with that. But that's like the research. The research that I've read it says that. Okay. Okay. I don't know, by people that are a lot smarter than me. So. Uh huh. <laughs> well said. Well said. Yeah, that's how it goes. So that's that's what I do. I'll just regurgitate the research that I see. Right. Right. But yeah, that's that's the one thing. And like, there's just so much shit about like salt. There there was some studies I was looking at too. It was like. You, you've heard that salt causes hypertension, right? Like high blood pressure? No, I've never heard that. No. That salt does? I've never heard that, no. Uh, well, so basically, if you have high blood pressure, like that's the first thing like a doctor would probably like, you, you usually do is put you on like a low low salt diet. Okay, absolutely. And because um, it like salt increases your blood volume or whatever. But What do you mean by that? Like it makes your blood more dense or 
it just like or expands more, it or yeah just more blood in, in the artery basically okay absolutely like more red blood cells in there but your arteries aren't necessarily getting expanded i'm assuming not necessarily yeah so like, okay but there's like so much there's so much more that goes into it dude it's like it's like they say that that causes it but there's just so many factors the, the like the problem is with like these big studies that say that they're empirical that means like they go they go off of correlations like they'll take a population they'll say okay america has this this rise in obesity and this like rise in eating red meat uh-huh. so they're like okay so like these two are correlated that doesn't necessarily mean they're caused by each other true but correlation is not the first thing they'll teach you in science is correlation is not causation absolutely like it's absolutely just because they're related there's a relationship doesn't mean it's ca- it's causing it then it's theoretical at that point yeah and there's just there's so many more variables that uh-huh. into it. it's such a complex equation that nobody really knows like there's some things we can guess but to say that like that's what causes it or that saturated fat causes heart disease like these are all theories these are all theories yeah they all they're all theories no one really knows what's going on like cuz there's studies that go back and forth like I, that, there was one thing I was listening to some podcast about it was the Joe Rogan one they had like two cardiologists on okay. one of them at least was it was like one was arguing that all like that saturated fat cholesterol all that causes it and one guy wasn't and the one guy that wasn't, he was saying that the first thing with heart, like the first like recordings and like just literature about heart attacks was only like in the 19, like 1916 or something. So like before that, he says that like it wasn't really like a big problem. Uh huh. So like, I don't know. I think, I think that like, the Wait, only th- which one, which one's arguing what, 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 well, what okay. The- so basically in 1916, like they didn't really have heart attacks before that. Okay. That's what he was saying. Interesting. And like, what's changed since then? Like, we've always eaten like red meat and like, like, animal based fats, you know? Absolutely. Like, that's never changed. Like butter and all that. Like, I think like the only thing that really changed is like processed sugar, processed carbs, like hamburger helper. You know what I mean? Like, Powerade, all your Slurpees and whatnot. Uh huh. I feel like that probably has something to do with it. Interesting. More okay. Than, more than the things we've already doing. I and like. There's there's probably obviously saturated fat does play a little bit of a role like there there have been studies that show that but it's not as much of it's not only that you know as much as we thought yeah and that's one thing is that we don't really know shit <laughs> like we can act like we do and we can go based off what we know right now but things change so much right like think about if you were in 2014 you were like all right well we're gonna limit your cholesterol like. That obviously wouldn't help anything, you know. That would hurt you if anything. Hey, so what's with the? I don't know if you know much about this, but what's the premise of the paleo diet? Isn't that just like all natural, pretty much? Yeah, just yeah. Honestly, and that would be something. Does probably, that make sense to me? Yeah, it's just things that aren't on the shelves. Basically, it's like just things that you would eat if you were a caveman, basically. And that's kind of what I've been doing recently. I don't know if you ever heard of the vertical diet. No, I haven't. By uh, so this guy Stan Efferding, right? He vertical basically diet. does. I looked it up. That's like. It's like you feel great on it, honestly, and your strength goes way the fuck up. I like to keep like show notes, like yeah. what I'm learning. So, and that's, I get honestly, there's a lot. He gives you a lot of decent information about that. And he was the first guy that I really realized about how like a lot of the things that they say about like heart disease and high blood pressure. And that's the thing is that with the salt that I was telling you about earlier, uh-huh. he eats like, so the, the recommended level of salt is like 2400 milligrams uh-huh. he eats like 10 to twelve thousand. so like five times more than what like they say to eat and his blood pressure is like ridiculously low and everybody he puts everybody he puts on this diet their blood pressure drops so he was saying they like what's his reasoning for taking so much sodium in it dude it's like the mo- it's like an crazy performance enhancer for like weightlifting and like shit like that really yeah like I've heard that with pickle juice. Yeah, well, that's and, just like, a bunch of sodium. That's about yeah. electrolytes and like salt is electrolyte, like uh-huh. sodium, and basically your neurons and stuff run on that, and that's what tell your muscles to do shit. Interesting. Okay. So like, well, not only that, like your blood too. Everything really needs that, you know. So, that that's one thing that I've been doing, and like basically the it's pretty much diet. the vertical diet, like. I ate, I ate it all day today, and like honestly, it's only been a couple days, but you, f- I definitely feel a lot better. Like I notice when I eat like a fuck ton of ham, like it's either that or hamburger helper, basically. Uh-huh. And hamburger helper, I feel like shit after it for a while. Like I'm in like a food coma. 
That also could be because I'm eating too much of it too. But this vertical diet is basically – But also if you're eating a lot of like healthy shit, you don't feel terrible. Yeah, after yeah. Too. I'll so definitely notice that. So it's it's probably hamb- hamburger helper more. Oh yeah, Velveeta, how much that, the that fucking that processed cheese. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's so yeah. good, though, dude. It's so good. <laughs> but it's basically steak, rice, peppers, spinach, and like uh, chicken stock. Okay. And you just put all that in a bowl. And yeah, I've definitely noticed like it's just there's like a fuck ton of sodium and potassium. Like your body basically runs on sodium and potassium pumps. Like that, like transports all the shit from your cell to cell. Okay. And, like, what exactly? Like nutrients. Okay. Like okay. from your blood to your cells, and like, like, but your body really just needs all of it. I really don't know, like, the like the mechanism of action with it. Uh huh. I I have to like study that for years, but, like, just increasing in that, it definitely like you just feel way stronger. Like you can you can tell, and that's the biggest thing about like our lifestyle, like getting drunk. And then working out hungover, like you're when you're pissing all that out, you're like depleting all your electrolytes. Uh-huh. And then so you're not only dehydrated, but you don't have any of that in you. Okay, absolutely. So that's something that like that's why like Gatorades and shit are so like or feel good, and you feel better on that because it's like there's electrolytes in it, and it's like hydrating you. Okay, absolutely. So that's definitely so. Ideally that. speaking, it's like Gatorade without the sugar. Then yeah, pretty much yeah. Okay, that's like ideal. Okay. Yeah. So, which is pickle juice. And <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pickle juice. Definitely. Okay. I just, I don't fuck with pickles, so I can't, I can't drink that. But yeah. It's an acquired taste. Yeah, for sure. And that's the thing is that like, it's not that, it doesn't taste that good. I mean, it's thick and rice, you know? Uh-huh. It's not bad, but. Cause my, my diet right now is pretty, it's pretty fucking basic. It's like oatmeal, peanut butter, protein powder, eggs, chicken. And then when I make chicken or eggs, I add like spinach, Brussels sprouts, mm-hmm. green peppers, and then fucking like, um, what else? Maybe like tomatoes or something. Like it's really? pretty, pretty basic mushrooms yeah. at times. That's good though. I feel like just the less random shit you're getting in, the better, the less refined processed shit you get. I mean, that, that's like the core of what I eat. And then it, it'll branch out like it, but same thing. Like I had, uh, I like, uh, the Burger King like chicken nuggets and like I, I like the oh, Burger yeah. King like they're, they're good they're good dude they're good have you had the spicy ones no I haven't yet I haven't yet get you some of those I, I wanted get to test it out the other day and I asked her I'm like can I get five and then five of the normal and she's like no we can't do that I was like bitch no Damn. but but uh um, no like I, I've, I I'll get that and I'll get like their chicken sandwich more so when I try the chicken sandwich I will just feel like shit, man. I'll feel like shit. Oh yeah, that's definitely a thing I've noticed. If you want to wrap this up anytime soon, I'm I'm cool whenever, honestly. Nine fifty. Yeah, I'm down to wrap it up. Cool. It's already about ten. What? How long have we been talking? Hour and a half. Hour and a half. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to check the time. Yeah. Do you, want to check, you want to wrap it up now, or are you want to do like a last topic type of deal, or what? It, I'm uh, cool. With you got whatever you got any other topics. I feel like it's hard to like fire like on the right, spot, yeah, on the spot. Like, like organically it always yeah, comes up so just naturally. Float into whatever. I will say, are you cool? With, are you cool with? Uh, I like to make like Instagram stories with like promoting these. Yeah, are you man. cool with? For cool. sure. I might send it to Pat too. Yeah, he just snapped me actually. I think. Oh no! Uh, I fucking love Pat, man. Yeah, you got you had him on here, didn't you? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, he's an interesting guy. I've, yeah. He's I, I've always found him like just very, very charismatic, just like a oh, just yeah. a ge- oh, really sure. genuine dude, man. Absolutely, he's coming down this weekend tomorrow, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. So we all need to get on some bullshit. This I'm weekend. down. <laughs> I'm down. I'm free. I'm actually free both night. I I might be hanging out with the girl tomorrow. I'm hanging out with the girl tomorrow, but but Saturday, dude, I'm down. Let's get it. Big day on Saturday. I'm down. Yeah, that sounds fun. <laughs> what are you What are you doing Saturday? No idea. I got some boys coming in town too, and Pat. So I'm sure we're gonna be at the house bullshitting. You oh, come there by. you go. Cool. Yeah, For I'll sure. be studying during the day, but like like evening. I I'll ideally speaking, I'll get done like somewhat early. Right. And then uh, be good, free for the rest of the day. For sure. Dude, that sounds fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah we could just we could get on some shit for sure. He offered to take me hunting. I've never been. Yeah. And uh, so I'm like, I'm about it. I would like I'm to trying do to that make too it at some point. Casey. I just, like no one in my family ever really did it. Damn. You know, so like I would like it. I feel like I like I love fishing and whatnot. So I don't know. One day. That's totally one of those things. Like you said, like it. Like if your family did it, then yeah. you probably did it. But uh, otherwise, it's like 
unless you maybe had like a close friend that wanted to take you one time like besides that you probably don't get into it really no exactly yeah that's the thing and it's expensive if you're just getting into it true like you gotta buy tags you gotta get a license get a gun buy all that camo shit true yeah man that's how it is take this real quick Hey, just did a podcast, or we're doing one right now. We're in the the process. I'll zoom in on you. How was that? <laughs> it's perfect. Cool. Deuces.